Hello everyone, this is Rohit Mahar and this is our third lecture of our subject Introduction to Solid Mechanics of a Unit Spring Cylinder and Sphere So, in first, two, first and two second lecture uh, we discussed what, what is spring, what are the uses of spring, what are different types of springs, open coil and closed coil and then we further get to the spring, analyze the closed coil helical spring under the actual load and actual torque and we find the deflection equation and the stress equation okay so the, the further part is to uh, analyze the open coil helical spring but before that there are two other things to be uh, introduced first so before jump to the open coil helical spring analysis we just uh, just um, analyze and study these two part of the spring which is uh, used uh, in various cases where the springs has to be connected or two springs had to be joined or work as a single mechanism so in that case there is a different uh, methodology to be used to springs to one other another to bear the uh, functional external force so there are the various ways to uh, use these two different types of spring in one to another so either you can place spring in the series form or you take parallel springs one to another or either you place one spring into the another spring as you as uh, i showed you in the first lecture in the kinds of spring where i told you about the concentric spring where one spring is put into the another spring which is used in the suspension of a, a bike or a machinery or equipment so in this chapter we're going to discuss the spring in series and in parallel and the concentric spring okay so let's just get to the topic here it is springs in series and parallel so we know that before jumping to the this junction junky junky part we let me just get to you to explain the thing how this is even working so first part is either you can connect the spring what you wait a minute either you connect the spring in a series form like this there is a spring of a different diameter of coil here and you connect it here okay now in this condition if you fix this end and applied a load here w then what happened so in this case when you place one spring here another spring here which is having a different stiffness or a, a different uh, diameter of coil different diameter of uh, their ring so in the in that case what happen is the the deflection generated in this spring let me just assume it del1 and deflection in this spring is del2 then total deflection is equal to del1 plus del2 this is the concept the springs in series okay springs in series gives you the deflection by adding up deflection of one spring to the another spring okay and we already know the stiffness of, of a spring can be calculated by simply dividing sorry stiffness can be calculated which is if you assume stiffness of a spring is s then stiffness of a spring is w upon deflection del so here we know the deflection of spring is 
individual deflection of spring 1 and spring 2 so we can find the value of a deflection by simply readjusting the value of in this equation so deflection del is equal to w upon s where s is a stiffness of spring so by putting it here as you can see here okay let me just remove it as you can see here total deflection is equal to deflection of spring 1 deflection of spring 2 which can be calculated by total stiffness of a spring combined which is assumed to be s load is same for spring 1 and spring 2 and stiffness is changed for spring 1 is s1 spring 2 is s2 then by taking out w as a common factor from both of those sides then we have a solution s where s is the total stiffness of a combined effect of spring 1 and spring 2 which is calculated s1 s2 upon s1 plus s2 so we can easily find the total combined effect of stiffness by joining two springs in a series okay now if we put the springs in parallel form this is one spring and this is another spring and you just fix the one end and connect second end with one thing and applied a load w then in that case what happened you already know in that case the deflection remain same for this spring for this spring okay in that case as you can see here the deflection is same then the total value of individual ratio of deflection has to be same okay but in this case the load taken by one is this spring and load taken by this spring has to be a total load which is applied here which means total load has to be equal to load taken by spring 1 and load taken by spring 2 then by adding up these two loads w1 and w2 gives us the value of total load which is applied to the parallel spring and from this equation we can place the value here which is w is equal to del s1 and w2 is equal to del s2 from this equation we can common out the value of del and we have a left equation is s is equal to s1 plus s2 which means that if we put together two springs in parallel then the total effect of the spring in case of stiffness is adding up two individual stiffnesses of the combining springs okay so this is a part for springs in series and parallel you can easily find the stiffness of a spring in series and parallel by using these two equations okay so this is a external purpose to use springs by adding up in parallel and series but if you fuse one spring to the another one spring into another placing okay in that case how can you solve a ratio or a relation to deduce or analyze this kind of a spring okay basically these kind of a string are called as concentric springs so let get to the topic here it is the concentric spring or you can say the cluster spring so this is a figurative representation of a cross-sectional uh, view of a, uh, vertical axis okay so here you can easily find these are the cross section of a inner ring or a coil of an inner spring and these two are the cross section of outer coil cross sectional ring okay
so the if you find how the springs are actually look so if there is a spring here and if you put another spring into it okay and you cut from center and look from this side of one individual this coil and this coil the figure looks this way okay so this is a kind of a representation to solve analyze the question or relation between them if you need to find a clear version of the spring how they look so there is another representation you already shown one spring into another basically this kind of spring is used under heavy loading or heavy uh, uh, purpose to resolve the shock generated in the machine so in that case how to find the relation to solve it so let's just assume as you can see in the figure the diameter of the inner ring is ti small di and diameter of outer ring is small d naught and the surface to surface distance between inner and outer ring is capital C and radius of external coil is capital R and radius of internal coil is small uh, capital R i okay so we can easily find the value of capital R naught and diameter of our external ring in adding up these following parts ri then half d di by 2 and then center to center distance which is c and then d naught by 2 which is here and by simply multiplying 2 in both equation gives us the this value 2 r naught become d naught ri become di dy by 2 become di c become 2c and d naught by 2 become d naught so this is a form in diameter and this is a form in radius and diameter so how can we find the relation or a equation to analyze this kind of equation spring so first in these cluster or concentric spring one thing is for sure which is the deflection remain the same and we already know the equation of a deflection which is 8w dn upon g d k power 4 so this has to be same for inner spring and for outer spring okay so i and nod or say o denotes the inner and outer spring characteristics so Further, we already know the shear stress or torsional stress equation for inner spring and outer spring which has to be same because the load and the deflection generated in the spring has to be same okay so in that case by dividing these two equation okay by dividing these two equation we have this value Okay, rest is cut it out. Okay, then from these two equation we have a gi di upon ni di square up is equal to g naught d naught upon n naught d naught square. So from this equation by manipulating and taking out d naught and di part from one side, then we have in this form equation ni upon n naught g naught upon g i d naught upon d i so for, for for the solution we have to assume that the total length of a spring which is inner and outer has to be same and the material of both of these springs has to be same so by assuming that and placing the value as you can see here the modulus of rigidity if we assume is same or say same material and the length of the spring is same which is NDI where 2 Ri into N into Pi 
is equal to two R naught into N naught pi. So this is has to be same. Then pi pi is cancel, and two R become di, and two R naught become d naught. So this equation is n i d i is equal to n naught d naught. From this we have to find the value of n i upon n naught and put it in this equation. Then this equation becomes this way: d naught upon d i whole square is equal to d naught upon d i whole square in small. So we have a relation which is d naught upon d i is equal to d naught upon d i in small. And by placing this equation in this equation, this relation into this equation, and by placing this relation into this equation, we have this equation, which is w naught upon w i is equal to d i upon d naught multiply small d naught cube upon small d i cube. Okay, and we already have this equation, which is here, and by by placing it here, we have this equation. And by solving it, we have this d naught upon d i square. So final, we have this equation. Okay, so this equation represents that how much the inner ring and the outer ring having the load carrying ratio depends upon the ratio of their Internal and outer ring diameter square. Okay, so this equation relates how much inner and outer coil of the spring behave and based on their internal outer diameter to the square value. Okay, so we can uh, easily design the spring in. Based on this relation, so that spring can bear load in their diameter of the coil to the power two. Okay, so this is for the lecture three, and into the next lecture we going to discuss the open coil helical spring. Okay. So up to now, up to third question, up to third lecture. If you have any queries, question, just ask in the comment box. If you if you dislike something, just say so. I can provide or make changes in the lecture, or put it more equation, more explanation, or more variety of explanation methods, or more figures or something. Just say so. Okay, thank you.